Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Bow with me for the opening prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and grace, for your never-ending love and faithfulness. Thank you, O God, for your glory revealed in the brightness of a wintry day, in the song of angels, and in the face of a child. As we gather today, we welcome your presence among us. Come into our hearts, fill us with your light and love, with your peace and joy, that we may be bearers of your good news. Speak to us, encourage us, and fill us with hope. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. All right, now we will have a candle lighting with Wynn, Vanessa, Jed, and Nate. Psalm 89, 1-8. I will sing of the love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you establish your faithfulness in heaven itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness to in the assembly of the Holy One. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the Holy Ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround us. O Lord Almighty, who is like you? You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. We light the candle of hope as we remember that Jesus will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. We light the candle of peace to proclaim that God sent Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into our world to bring salvation and everlasting peace. We light the candle of joy to proclaim that God sent Jesus into our world to bring a new life and everlasting joy. Today we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. We hear God's promises to the King, David. My unfailing love will never be taken away from you. You, your house, and your kingdom will continue for all time before me, and your throne will be established forever. The angel Gabriel promises Mary, you will bear a son, Jesus, the son of the Most High. The Lord will deal on the throne of his ancestor David, and will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. We respond in praise to the psalmist. Let us worship God, whose promises of steadfast love and faithfulness continue forever. Let us worship Jesus Christ, in whom God's promises are fulfilled. We light the candle of love to proclaim that God's love is revealed in the child born in Bethlehem. As we look at the light of this candle, may we celebrate the love we have in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. May we reveal the same love as we live for Jesus. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord God, for your great love that far surpasses our human understanding. Thank you for your love shown to us in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we wait for all your promises to be fulfilled and for Christ to come again, may we live in your love and share your love with others around us. We ask in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem, Jesus, Emmanuel, Son of God, Messiah. Amen.
All right, we'll have some scripture reading from Matthew 1, 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her, Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and didn't want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name of Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded or commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. He had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. I right, ask Sharon to come up to give the message for God so loved the world. So how do you describe the indescribable? How do you put your feelings, maybe something you've seen or experienced, how do you put your feelings into words? My mom and sister arrived at our trailer in Karenport late at night, the day of my graduation in 2004. They missed the graduation. They couldn't come because Janine was speaking at a conference that weekend. But they came to celebrate with me anyway, even although the graduation itself was over. And everyone kept it as a secret from me. I walked into the living room that night, it was ten, between 10 and 11 o'clock, and they were sitting on the couch. And my, you've heard this story before. My mind and my eyes actually blanked them out after I saw them because I knew that they weren't coming and that they couldn't be there. It's hard to describe the joy I felt when I realized this is true, they are actually here. And there were lots of hugs and lots of tears. Maybe indescribable is when your newborn baby is laid on your chest. It's beyond words. Maybe it's something you dreamed of and hoped of finally happens. Or maybe you went on a trip and you try to describe what you saw, and it's almost impossible. Words just don't, uh, don't, just words just can't describe it. I remember I drove home from Karenport this past fall, one evening, Sunday evening, and uh, the clouds were, were just amazing. And at places the sun was behind it, uh, it was just incredible. And I could hardly keep my eyes on the road. I just wanted to watch the clouds. And when I got through that place, I kept watching in my rearview mirror. They were just mesmerizing. It was just amazing. And when I got home, I said how beautiful they were. And it was like, how inadequate. How inadequate to describe what I had seen. But this is how I felt this past week as I've tried to put into words what's been, on my, what's been in my heart. I feel so overwhelmed with the wonder of who God is and what he's done. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. We lit the candle of love. The birth of Jesus is a powerful reminder of God's love for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. And the whole Bible is an incredible story of God's amazing love for humanity, and not only humanity, but for all creation, for the whole world. How, God, how God, the God of the universe chooses to interact with humanity. And Jesus' birth proves to us the incredible lengths that God will go for us. God in a manger. The angel tells Joseph, name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Name him Emmanuel the very presence of God with us. The angel tells Mary, Jesus will be called the Son of the Most High, the Son of God. 
He will be a king on the throne of his father David and will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Logan read those words that fulfill that promise from Psalms 89 earlier. The, the, actually, the words of promise, and now God is fulfilling the promise many years later. It's way, way different than what we would expect and the way we would do it. It's good news for all people. A Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. Baby Jesus is God. Go, find him laying in a manger. This baby should never be in a manger. He should be born in the care of the most professional and the best doctors imaginable, in a beautiful palace, in a luxurious cradle. He should be protected and given care by the most trustworthy people. You've seen the pictures on TV when royals have, give birth. It's in a hospital. And after a few days, they come out for a photo op on the front steps. That's how it's done. This baby is God's son. He was there in the beginning, before time began, before the creation of the heavens and the earth. And we're told that the spirit hovered over the darkness and the water. And God spoke the words. Trinity in perfection. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, equal in power, fully God. They stand together in this cusp of nothingness before the first word is spoken into this nothingness. And in love, they create the world. John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Those are words of John trying to describe the indescribable. We know that one plus one plus one equals three. But in Genesis and in John, he tells us that one plus one plus one equals one. Father plus Son plus Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons and yet one God. Three in one. We try to wrap our minds around that. Not only was Jesus there in the beginning, but we're told that through him all things were made. Nothing has been made without him. As I thought about that verse, I thought if Jesus is the, the, and he is, is the maker of all things, that means that we can trust him. We can depend on him. When life gets tough, we can trust our life to the sovereign power of Jesus, who is Lord over everything. All through the Old Testament, God is speaking and God is working. The Spirit of God is active. And now, at just the right time, the very Son of God, the Son who is described as the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, the one who sustains all things by his powerful word, is born in the normal way to an ordinary couple. and he's laid in a manger, the creator of the universe. God, who we are told in different places in the Old Testament that we cannot see his face. God, who said very clearly over and over again that no image was to be made of him, appears in human flesh, and he enters into the full expression of humanity, and we see Jesus beyond comprehension. And often we try to describe the undescribable in different ways, but one way that I really like is through song. Love the words of a, of a Getty song. Hail, blessed morn, see the great mediator, down from the regions of glory descend. Those words just grip me. I love that song. Imagine the very God of the universe coming down through the corridors of heaven, to the regions of glory and making himself a vulnerable, helpless baby in Mary's womb. Tiny little boy. Takes your breath away. 
Another song I listened to this week said, from the highest of the high to the lowest of the low, that stable tells the story of the distance God will go to reach the lonely and the lost. No one is too far gone to find a savior in a manger. Athanasia is one of the early church fathers and he said, he became what we are so that we might become what he is. And as I read those words, when I came across those words, immediately my soul just started to sing, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Songs seem to express in a better way than words can. God's ways are so amazing. And I want to end with a story. It's a parable told by uh, Kirkgaard, who was a philosopher, a theologian back in the 1800s. I did share this story a few years ago. But listen to it again if you've heard it. It gives a beautiful picture of why God sent Jesus, the King of glory, to earth to live among us. It's called the King and the Maiden. Suppose there was a powerful king, a king like no other. Everybody trembled before his power. No one dared speak against him, for he had the power and the strength and the ability to crush all opponents. This mighty king fell in love with a humble maiden who lived in a poor village in his kingdom. What should he do? How can he tell her he loves her? As king, he could order her to the palace and order her to marry him, and she couldn't refuse. But then she'd only be marrying him because she was commanded to. If he, bought her, or if he brought her to the palace and gave her jewels and royal robes, she would have to come. No one denies the king. But would she love him? She may say she loves him, but would she really? Or would she just love living in the luxury of a palace? Would she be afraid of him? and maybe even miss the life she left behind. Would she be happy at his side? How could he know for sure? If he rode to her forest cottage in a royal carriage with an armed escort, waving bright banners that, were, that would, over, would that overwhelm her? He didn't want a servant. He wanted a lover. He wanted an equal. He wanted her to forget that he was king and she was only a humble maid. And she, he wanted them to love each other as equals. King was convinced he couldn't elevate the maiden without crushing her freedom. So he resolved to descend to her. He gave up his kingly role and he moved into her neighborhood. Clothed as a beggar, he approached the cottage wearing a worn cloak that fluttered loose around him. This wasn't just a disguise. The king took on a totally new identity. He renounced his throne to declare his love and to win hers. He'd get a job, maybe as a carpenter. And he'd work through the day, and he'd have time off in the evening, and he'd get acquainted with the people. He'd share their interests and concerns. He'd learn their language. And he'd make her acquaintance in a natural way. And should she come to love him as he already loved her, then he'd ask for her hand in marriage. I always like to say this after a parable. I know that if you push too hard, a parable breaks down. But as I thought about this story, I thought, a king doesn't do that. He doesn't. Until he does. And there's only one reason I can think of why a king would leave his throne and why he would humble himself and become become one of us. That is love. Great, deep, abiding, everlasting love. For God so loved the world. Almighty, holy God in human flesh. Jesus come to earth to live and work among us. Not in a hurry. It took 30 years before he started his official ministry. Yet in Jesus we see God is loving and is merciful, he's caring, he's just, he 
He's righteous. He's faithful and so much more. It's pretty incredible. Let's celebrate Jesus' birth next Sunday. Even though it's hard for us to fathom what all he has done for us. Even though it's indescribable. May we worship at the manger. May we experience the overwhelming love of God. And may we open our hearts even more for Jesus to enter in. Let's pray together. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you that from the highest place you came down to be among us, to live with us, to show us God's great love, to make that way that we can have a relationship with you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your ways, oh God, that you do things way different than we do, but yet they're so much better. Father, may we trust you more. May we be more willing to, to step out in faith, to serve you, to walk with you. Thank you, O oh God. Lord, as we go into this week, your spirit goes with us, living within us, walking with us, guiding us in the way. And Lord, I pray for many opportunities to share that great love of Jesus the joy that's found in Jesus Christ with those around us through our words and in our actions. And Lord, as you have blessed us, may we be a blessing to others, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go back to your places of ordinary daily living, may the love of God our Father surround you, the grace of Jesus Christ fill you, and may the Holy Spirit open your eyes and hearts to what God continues to do through ordinary people like me and like you. Go in peace. God is with us. And go enjoy a nice dinner. It smells good. <laughs>